Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So today I have a special guest for a special moment. It's my brother Andy. You guys absolutely love him. Let's just quickly say hi hey, Andy. Guys. How so, you doing? He's doing fine because of course Pan the Organizer is taking care of his vehicle. What we're going to be doing today is something special and different. We're going to test what the limits are of a touchless car wash experience. Is there such a thing? How much dirt can a touchless wash actually remove? So we're going to be using, I'm going to show you the products and tools in just a few seconds. But first, let's see the state of this vehicle. So as you guys know, for those who follow my channel, he doesn't wash his vehicle quite often. It's been over a month at this point. And we can tell uh, we're mid-April right now. There's still a bit of snow outside in Montreal, Canada. So we still have a bit of road grime. Come and have a look. So we're going to see the uh, water spots and all this dirt and grime uh, on the hood itself. On the windshield, you can see the dirt. There's already a bit of bug splatter. We're going to see if that takes care of it. He just had his summer wheels and tires installed. So they were in storage at a local garage. And you can see all that brake dust and crap, that filth that's on the wheels, the inner arches are dirty. And the uh, paintwork itself, as you can hopefully see, there's some grime, there's some traffic film, there's some road salts from the calcium and all this magnesium chloride that they were using on the roads and it's pretty dirty. It's not caked in mud, he doesn't do any rally driving in muddy situations. So this is not extreme levels of dirt guys, uh, but this is still fairly dirty and we're gonna see what the limits are. Now, what products and tools are we going to use? Quite simple for this. So I'm gonna leave, by the way, all the links to the products and equipment in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show as usual. So for the wheels and tires, for the wheels themselves, because there's a lot of brake dust, rail dust, and uh, pollutants that are on there, we're gonna use the uh, Turtle Wax uh, Rapid Decon All Wheel Cleaner and Iron Remover. So this has a built-in iron remover. It's gonna turn to a red or purple tint when it's reacting with the iron particles. So this is for the wheels. For the tires, we're gonna be using another very effective product. Uh, these are very inexpensive as well. So Turtle Wax uh, Hyperfoam Wheel Cleaner and Tire Prep for the tires themselves. And then we're going to blanket the vehicle with a layer of snow foam. But not any snow foam. The majority of the snow foams, if they're pH neutral, so close to pH 7, they're used more for lubrication purposes before the contact wash, so you get less chances of scratching and marring. But when we're talking about true cleaning potential, you need to go higher up on the alkaline side. And for that purpose, we're going to be using Built Hamber Touchless. This is a product from the UK. Uh, it's available in a lot of countries. Again, links in the description. Uh, this one here is sugar-based. It's a pH 12. You can also use their Built Hamber Auto Foam, a pH 13, both are very good. What they what they excel in is truly the cleaning potential. So the cleaning power. We're going to let that dwell on the surface for a few minutes. Always read the instructions, by the way. Uh, the dilution is a bit more complicated because you need the panel impact ratio on the built hammer. But if you follow the steps, it's not that complicated. Uh, it goes according to the pressure washer setup that you have. So the amount of uh, GPM, gallons per minute of water flow that you have, and also what type of foam cannon you use. So you have to do the measurements to get the correct ratio. Uh, in this case today, we're using a 5% PIR. So this is at the higher side of their recommended percentage for actual cleaning. So it's in the MJJC uh, Foam Cannon Pro Foam Cannon. I did the dilution already. Uh, and if you follow the instructions here, they tell you to let it dwell on the surface uh, for one to five minutes. So we're gonna apply it on dry paint because this is where you're diluting the product the least when it's on the surface and it's gonna have the biggest cleaning action. We're gonna rinse and then we'll come, come back and dry the vehicle and see what kind of cleaning potential there was with the cleaning, a uh, touchless cleaning method. So let's immediately go ahead. Let's take the wheel and tire cleaners and let's apply that. Uh, guys, always work in the shade on a cool surface or uh, like me in a garage, I work at 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, roughly 45% humidity. So this is a controlled environment, but outside in the shade is fine. So the wheel cleaner with Iron Decon technology from Turtle Wax, we're gonna spray that on the surface and let that work. And we're gonna use the Hyperfoam. You can also use this to clean the wheels and tires. It has a bit of that uh, brake dust removing technology, but I prefer this one here on the wheels that are heavily caked in brake dust because it has that dedicated TGA, which is the active ingredient. You can already see the browning on the tires being pulled up if you come closely. Nice foaming action thanks to the foaming trigger, and we can already see the change of color on the wheels. Look at that. That's the brake dust 
So that's a chemical reaction, an exothermic reaction. So when it reacts with the iron particles, it changes color to indicate that the reaction is happening. So we're gonna do the four wheels and tires. And you're gonna tell, this is a quick method. When would you use a touchless wash? Usually guys, there's no such thing as 100% clean without doing a contact wash. So keep that in mind. So what I highly recommend, of course, is follow up the snow foam with a contact wash on the vehicle. This is if you want to get a 100% clean surface. What the um, contactless method does, if you follow me for the other side, is it allows you to quickly clean your car if you're in a hurry, you don't really want to touch the vehicle, and you want to do just a quick cleaning, we're going to see what the limits are. Is it a myth that you can do a touchless car wash method? How effective is it? Because the goal really for the Pandy organizer viewers and subscribers, as we're enthusiasts of car detailing here, is use a cleaning snow foam like this for that initial pre-wash stage. So the goal, in my opinion, is always to remove the most amount of dirt and grime before you do the contact wash. And if you've seen my videos on do snow foams work, yes, they work depending on which ones you get and what type of applications you get. So this is quite simple. You're just spraying this on, you're letting it dwell. We're going to cover this with the snow foam while it's continuing to work. Never let Iron removers dry on the surface, by the way, that is very important. Again, we're getting this beautiful action. This quick disclaimer also, this is not a sponsored video. Nobody paid for this video. This is just me doing some testing. And I know you guys like to see which te techniques work the most. There you go. So we used, what, about half the bottle for the wheels and tires. That's the only downside of this product is you're using quite a bit. And for this, we didn't use much inside there. Now, let's connect the foam cannon. We're going to spray blanket the vehicle with a nice layer of snow foam. There's a few. So for me, uh, the Built Hammer Touchless and Built Hammer Auto Foam are the ones that uh, in my testing have given the biggest cleaning potential, but you also have other high alkaline pH ones that do a great job. So you have, uh, for example, CarPro Lift, another very, very good one at that. Uh, there's also Gion Foam that does a great job at uh, pre-cleaning. So uh, yeah, there's also uh, Koshemi. So they have their Active Foam and their Magic Foam higher on the pH scale. So I think if I remember correctly, Active Foam is a pH nine and a half and Magic Foam, a pH 12, don't quote me on that, but those are roughly the numbers. So let's start blanketing the vehicle with the uh, Built Hammer Touchless. And there we go, we're gonna let that sit and dwell on the surface for one to five minutes. Never let these kinds of snow foams dry on the surface as well. These higher alkaline, it's not as bad when you have a pH neutral, because it's not gonna leave any uh, crazy soapy residue on the surface. But for these, you really wanna work in the shade on a cool surface, don't let them dry. We can already tell the foaming action. I mean, look at the wheels. Have a look at that, look at all the gunk. So it's already, thanks to the chemicals, without us even touching the uh, vehicle with our hands, it's pulling down a lot of that dirt and grime. Same thing here for the paint. You can see it sliding down with all those bubbles. And look at the pool. It's pulling a lot of that dirt and grime and it's removing it from the paintwork. And we're gonna see what it gives when it's gonna be time to rinse. So have a look from afar, how the entire vehicle looks now from that angle. There you go, we blanket it, the whole thing with the snow foam and we'll be back in a few minutes for the rinse off. All right guys, so it's been roughly five minutes. The uh, snow foam had time to dwell, encapsulate, lift all that dirt and grime as much as possible. Uh, we can tell if you look on the ground, look at all that foam, look at all the dirt, the grime, the brake dust, a bunch of disgusting things that's, uh, that are on there. So now we're gonna fully rinse the vehicle and then dry it and it's gonna give us a better understanding of the level of cleaning we get simply from using chemicals. All 
All right, guys, so we're done rinsing. Now we're gonna dry it. One quick note though that I wanna specify, when you're using high alkaline pH, especially at a 5% PIR for the built timbre, keep in mind it will strip and break down your existing protection like a wax, a sealant, uh, perhaps a spray on coating, even a ceramic coating can start to weaken the coating because these are at the extreme limits of what even those glass bottle coatings uh, can do. So this is only every once in a while for maintenance or before you're planning to apply new protection like in the springtime, for example, a great way to do a thorough deep clean. If you want to use it more regularly, just use a lower concentration, 2% PIR for regular maintenance washes and you should be fine. So now let's go ahead and dry the surface and see what that gives us. We're done with the drying of the vehicle. Now is the time to assess the level of dirt. What we're going to do to have a bit of contract cause, uh, contrast, because it is a dark paint, we're going to take a Scott towel and we're lightly going to see the surfaces themselves. So if you come in closer, have a look here at the paintwork. Is it 100% clean? I think no. So we debunked the myth. There is no such thing as 100% touchless wash. Does it work though? Yes, because it's dramatically less dirty. And all you're gonna get is a bit of this filmy residue. That's why we lost a lot of the hydrophobics as well. Not only is this a high pH, it can kill the lighter waxes or sealants, but it's also uh, not fully removing the traffic film that's on there. It's just gonna soften it up a bit, but you're losing a bit of the hydrophobics because you still have to do the contact wash. Whoever has protection on their vehicle, you'll notice that when you use a proper shampoo and a microfiber wash mitt, you're removing a bit of that surface dirt and grime, and it helps restore the hydrophobics, assuming that your protection is still there. Now, if we look at the wheels and tires, definitely there's a huge improvement on the browning on the tires. So they're a lot uh, darker looking. On the wheels though, we still see this residue. Again, this kind of film of dirt that's still on there, but it's much cleaner than it was before because I don't see as much of that brake dust. Now let's have a look with this white paper towel. So if we do a gentle swipe, now don't try this at home. I can correct any mistakes if there are, I don't recommend that you dry wipe, but we can see this is the level of dirt. So get close. This is on the paintwork. So there is, hopefully it translates well on camera. You can see a bit of that dirt. Let's take another section. Let's wipe a spoke of the wheel so you can see the dirt. So here we go. This is the wheel itself. There's a bit of dirt, definitely. The plastic trim has a bit of that film. Let's take another clean corner of the towel. Gently wipe that. Not as bad on here, just a bit of browning. On the windshield, it did do a good job. So if you come here, you're gonna see that the majority of the splattered bug guts that were on there aren't there anymore. So let's take one of these clean corners. And again, let's swipe and see what kind of dirt. This is almost practically clean, I'd say. And I don't see pretty much all the bug guts are gone, at least for that. Here on the hood, if you remember, we had a bunch of water spots and streaking and a bit of that dirt. There's not much there. So let's take a clean corner here and see what's on here. So we see, yep, there's a little bit of that dirt. But again, you can tell if you pull back, come on this side and have a look with the daylight from this angle here, you're going to see that it looks dramatically better. And the takeaway for me in this video is that a good pre-wash with a snow foam that actually has a bit of cleaning capabilities, again, is going to help to remove the majority of the loose dirt and debris, clearly knock off a lot of that grime before you do the contact wash. So now imagine if we're gonna do our contact wash on this because of a proper pre-wash with the snow foam that actually cleans in this case, well, there's not much left, so it's very safe for the contact wash with your microfiber wash mitt, your wash buckets, whatever uh, media or methods you use to clean your vehicle. So it's gonna be much safer. And that translates into much less chances of getting any marring on the paint. Those are the love marks, the little swirls and scratches that you get when you're doing things with your hands, either a towel drying your vehicle with a drying towel or using your microfiber wash mitt. Every time we touch the vehicle, we wanna make sure we remove as much of the dirt as possible. And this method clearly works, however, it is is not a hundred percent 
contactless clean because you still need to follow up with your contact wash. But uh, yeah, so do snow foams work? On the alkaline side, those that are made for cleaning potential, yes, absolutely, but only as part of the pre-wash stage. That means you blanket your vehicle, you rinse that off, you can reapply another layer of the snow foam if you want to have lubrication when you're doing your contact wash, added lubrication, that's fine. And then you proceed with your contact wash. It's gonna be much safer because again, if you look from afar, this looks much, much better. We can tell a bit of the gloss is back now. So all that's missing is the finishing the final touches with some proper uh, tire brushes, wheel brushes, and of course the uh, the mitts for washing the paint. So I hope this was quite useful to you guys. Uh, you also noticed I used a blower to dry the vehicle. If you have a good protection and you're using a shampoo that's perhaps uh, not as strong as the one I used, you're going to have a lot of water beating at the end and water sheeting. So with the protection on your paintwork, the blower allows you at least to dry the vehicle and remove the water without needing a drying towel. So at least you're removing one potential step where you're using your hands on the paint, less chances of scratching and marring. So even on the drying stage, you can use a car dryer or a leaf blower for a 100% a contactless drying experience. So I'll leave all the links to the tools and products in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. My brother Andy is always happy to be on the show, uh, but also of course me taking care of his vehicle. So guys, in the meantime, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.